Sometimes we use staggered holes for various connections of a tension member for several reasons such as to increase the effective net area, achieve a smaller connection length or to fit the geometry of the tension connection itself. Hello and welcome back to the Master Civil Engineering and in this video we will learn that how to find the design and the allowable strength for staggered connection using the AISC360. I have been given a question which states that the tension member is shown in figure is a plate 5 by 8 into 12 and the steel used is A36. The bolts are 3 by 4 inch in diameter. We have to find the design strength for LRFT and the allowable strength for the AST. First, the gross area of the plate is given as thickness times the gross width that is the 5 by 8 into 12 which is 7.5 inch square hole diameter this is equal to the bolt diameter plus 1 by 8 so it will be 3 by 4 plus 1 by 8 which is 7 by 8 inch net width in case of the staggered pitch is given as wn is equal to wg minus summation of dh minus summation of s square divided by 4g where this wg is the gross width of plate S is the staggered pitch and this G is the gauge or the transverse distance. For staggered connections we have to consider different failure lines and the one which gives us the least net width is the most critical one and this governs the strength of the connection. So we have to consider the various possibilities for the net width. The first possibility is along the line ABDE so this is a straight line the net width is given as wg minus summation of dh wg is equal to 12 and there are two bolt holes passing along this failure line so it will be 12 minus 2 into 7 by 8 which is equal to 10.25 inch next failure line which we will consider is along a b c d e since this is a staggered failure line so net width is given by this formula uh, so for this uh, staggered failure line we can see this passes through the three bolt holes one at b second at c and third one at d and there are two staggered pitch along this failure line and the value of s for this uh, staggered pitch is five inch so putting the values uh, of s is equal to 5 inch and g is equal to 4 inch we get the value of the net weight equal 12.5 inch the next failure line which we will consider is along the line ijcfh this is also a staggered failure line so net weight will be given by this formula in which uh, wg which is the gross weight will be 12 it passes through uh, three bolt holes so we will use uh, three bolt holes staggered pitch in this case is three inch and the gauge distance is four inch putting the values we get the net width as 10.5 inch we can see that before the load moves to this failure line some load would have been transferred from the member by the fastener at this b and d there are a total of 11 fasteners in this connections it means that this potential failure line will resist only 9 by length of the load. Therefore, we have to multiply this net width of 10.5 inch uh, uh, by 11 by 9 to obtain a net width that can be compared with uh, those lines that resist the full load. So multiply net width by 11 by 9 so it will be 10.5 into 11 by 9 which is equal to 12.83 inch will be the net width for this failure line next we will consider the failure line a b c g this is also a staggered failure line so net width will begin by this formula and it passes through two bolt holes and the value of s for this failure line is 5 inch and value of g is 4 inch Putting values, we get the value of net width as 11.813 inch. We can again see that 1 by 11th of the load would have been 
already transferred uh, by the fastener at D. So this failure line would have to resist only 10 by 11th of the load. So we have to multiply this net weight with 11 by 10 to obtain a net weight that uh, we can compare with uh, the net weight that resists the full load. So multiply the net width with 11 by 10, we get the value of WN is equal to 12.99H. The next failure line which we will consider is a, B, C, F, H. This is also a staggered failure line. So the net weight is given by this formula. Uh, and we can see for this uh, failure line, we have two types of staggered pitch. And it passes through three bolt holes. The value of S for the B, C is 5 inch. And value of S for C, F is 3 inch. So the value of net weight is equal to 12 minus 3 into 7 by 8 plus 5 squared divided by 4 into 4 plus 3 squared divided by 4 into 4, which is 11.5 inch. Again, for this uh, failure line, 1 by 11th of the load would already be transferred from the member by the fastener at D. So this failure line would resist only 10 by 11th of the load. We have to multiply this net width of 11.5 inch with 11 by 10. So multiply it with 11 by 10 to get uh, actual net weight, which is 12.65 inch. We can see that out of all the failure lines, the first case controls, that is along the line ABD, this is the critical one and uh, governs the design. So net weight is equal to 10.25 inch. Effective net area for this plate will be thickness multiplied by the net width so it will be 5 by 8 into 10.25 which is equal to 6.406 inch square since we are using the a36 steel for which the yield strength is 36 ksi and ultimate strength is 58 ksi nominal strength in yielding will be equal to yield strength multiplied by the gross area so it will be 36 times 7.5 which is 270 kips and uh, nominal strength in rupture it will be ultimate strength multiplied by the effective net area so it will be 58 into 6.406 which is 371.55 kips for lrft design strength based on the yielding will be equal to resistance factor multiplied by the nominal strength for yielding resistance factor is 0 0.9 so it will be 0 0.9 270 which is 243 kips and design strength based on rupture will be resistance factor multiplied by the nominal strength which uh, for rupture the value of resistance factor is 0 0.75 so it will be 0 0.75 into 371.55 which is 278.66 kips we can see that the strength in yielding is the smaller of the above two values so it controls the design so you can say the design strength for the lrft is 243 kips for ast allowable strength based on yielding will be nominal strength divided by the safety factor for yielding safety factor is 1.67 which gives us the value of allowable strength based on yielding as 161.68 kips uh, similarly the allowable strength based on the rupture is nominal strength divided by safety factor for rupture the safety factor is 2 so it will be 371.55 divided by 2 which is 185.78 kips we can again see that the strength in yielding is smaller of the above two values, so it will govern the design. So we can say that the allowable strength of this section for AST is 161.68 kips. So this is how you can consider different failure lines to find the strength of a staggered connection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new, but this is not it. You can find many more helpful solution videos on my channel. And if you want to learn uh, more, subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.